So, um, Noel, are you expecting anybody else? Okay, great. Hello. All right, I think everybody is here. So I think we can call the meeting to order. Welcome everybody to the Historical Commission meeting. I'll take attendance. Uh, Denise Barstow Mans. She's muted. Can you hear me, Diana? Yes, I can hear you, Sherry. This isn't connecting to audio. I don't know why it's got two separate boxes. Yeah, you're here twice. I only turned one it on has once. your sheet picture and one just has an S. Yeah, let me see if it doesn't seem to want to take my camera. Ah, uh, maybe. All right, so. There you are. <laughs> All right, back to attendance. We'll come back to Denise. Uh, Sorry. Courtney Meyer. Here. Sherry Parsons. <laughs> Jerry, are you here? Here. Judy Stone. Here. Diana West is here. Uh, no. Denise, are you with us? I'm oh. here. Sorry. Great. Thank you. No worries. All right. Welcome to our guest. Um, would Thank you. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Sure. Um, my name is C. Roos, and um, that was Noel, and that's our daughter, Amal. Um, we live in Amherst, and we work in Hadley. And, yeah, we're, we're here because we're trying to close on the property. We're actually going to hopefully close on it on Thursday for um, 101 East Street. Okay, great. Uh, first, we'll just approve the minutes and then we'll let you guys talk more about that project. Sure. So the minutes from May 23rd, I believe were distributed. Do we have any corrections or additions that need to be made to those? Okay to me. Great, do I'm... I have a motion to accept? So moved. So moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. All right, and now roll call vote again. Denise? Aye. Sher uh, Courtney? Aye. Sherry? Aye. Judy? Yes. Diana West also votes yes. Yeah. So motion carries minutes pass. All right, Theorist, 101 East Street, what would you like to tell us about that project? Sure, um, well, okay, a couple things. We are a dent, so I'm a pediatric dentist and uh, my wife is a general dentist and we opened an office on Route 9 at 207 Russell Street about three years ago. And um, mainly because there's no pediatric dentist and there's also just a severe shortage of dentists in the area, our practice has grown so much that... Um, we're outgrowing our space and we've been looking for um, land or anything to like kind of develop into a dental office for a little bit of time on Route 9. It's pretty scarce. So it was presented to us as an option. So we kind of looked into it. Here's my wife. I'll let her introduce herself. I'm Noel Nubani. I'm a Welcome. gentleman dentist. Yeah, I'm sorry for coming in a little later. I just needed to get her settled and I didn't want her to distract everybody. No worries. So yeah, it's kind of like our office has become a regional hub. They, the pediatric dentist in Berkshire County stopped taking mass health. So that entire county doesn't have a pediatric dentist. Um, and then Franklin County only has one which is severely deficient. And then Hampshire County has me and then one other office, which is deficient. And then there's a couple for Chicopee, Holyoke, Springfield, but given the density of people there, that's also very deficient. Um, and one of our, our office accepts Medicaid, MassHealth. So yeah, we have these patients coming and they're not your normal patient. They're the patients that have already been identified by dentists as having a lot of need, high risk, high risk, and really kind of last stop also for children that are nonverbal or have 
medical issues, there's not many dentists that feel comfortable seeing them. So then they get sent to us. Um, and just because of that, and, I, and I'm not exactly sure, we just really tried to, you know, we're just like a family. We live in the community. We try our best. It's, our practice has just grown so much. It makes a lot of sense for us to try and, um, while we're young, you know, be, own our own building and be our own tenants. Mm -hmm. And where we are, there's a lot of parking issues, which is like really complicated for us. So we've been looking for options and 101 East Street was kind of put on the, the menu per se for us. The, the owner is a developer who actually does develop some land in Hadley right now. And um, he presented us a plan that showed a 6,500 square foot building on that land. How um, big is the lot? It's like an, it's almost exactly an acre. Okay. It's a rectangular um, plot. plot. Mm -hmm. And then there's the farmhouse on it, which I didn't really realize at all how old it is because it's been renovated. Mm-hmm. And the renovation is like, it, it looks really nice on the outside, but it's really deficient. Like the inside is LVP and those photos are, I think like it's been rented to undergrad. And so it just, I don't know if you've seen the photos. I just put it, I'm just, I've actually put them back on because we're trying to rent it at the moment until we decide what to like, what, how, what to do and what we can do with it. Um, it's not in good shape. Like, but again, our idea at the time was to kind of build a building there. And mm -hmm. um, we were aware of there's something very unique about that property that it is um, non-conforming and the house is jutting into Route 9. Um, and there's some debate on whether the house even leave like the house might even leave the property line a little bit mm. in the one corner there would that and be th because route nine has been widened over the years mm -hmm. yeah mm. for sure and just because you know there was property and a home was built off of the property a little bit probably <laughs> it's just what it is it's not a big deal um in terms of us buying the house and the Route 9 expansion seems to have taken the land across the street. Mm -hmm. So there doesn't seem to be any eminent domain. They did take a little bit of the front yard, but if you go to that corner right now, I think it's pretty much done. Like they're putting the sidewalk there and that whole intersection has already been kind of, it looks like it's been finished. Um, So, yeah, our idea, we're, we're really open to a ton of ideas, but there's Bill Dwyer is actually the lawyer representing the, he's the, he's the seller's lawyer. Okay. He's also the planning board um, chairperson chair. So it's, he said he might have to recuse himself from some kind of some stuff. Mm -hmm. um, couldn't like give us the most advice either. But I was really asking him a lot of questions in the beginning, like, hey, is this developable? Is what can we do here? And pretty much it was like, I don't think it would be an issue at all. Um, Bank ESB has done a demolition across the street, wasn't too much of a problem. We do have all these laws or by town bylaws that you really need to abide by. Mm -hmm. So um, I advise you to really understand these. And, um, you know, we just can't, her and I can't figure that out ourselves. So we hired Berkshire Design. Berkshire Design is, I think, who you con were contacted by. So Carlos is really aware of the town and the historical district and all sorts of things that have been really valuable for us. So he's the one who's like, by the way, this home is like really old and it's in the historical district overlay and um, that might be something worth us looking into. So he reached out to you, which we mm. truly appreciate. He also came up with a plan. So he has sent us a plan 
that we are happy with. Um, it's a it's a rectangular building. It does not include the current structures. Okay. Um, I was hoping the current structures could be integrated. Just in, I would love to save use what we can is just my philosophy. Like if it doesn't need to come down, then it, it just shouldn't come down. Number one, I think it's a really nice house and there's a lot of um, potential there to change the use and improve it. Um, that was met with like, well, there's a 50, it's a corner lot and there's supposed to be a 50 foot setback from both the Route 9 and East Street. So the entire house sits within that setback. Because it's grandfathered in as of Yeah, now. it's just been there forever. And these setbacks are, you know, mm -hmm. more recent. Then on top of that, it actually leaves the property line or it goes right to the property line, which there's supposed to be like another setback from the property line for buildings. So um, really that seems to be a little complicated and there was no guidance on, essentially that's just, it's. there's nothing that can be done there based on the rules and just to get to closing, you know, with the seller saying there's someone else interested that wants to develop the law. And there was some sort of, like we didn't even, when we put in our offer, we were told there's a higher offer. And so we had to offer higher and there was some pressure put on us so essentially, like, we were given enough time to do a feasibility study, but nothing more. So a feasibility study is saying, at least based on the laws of the town of Hadley, you can build something here because they have the parking requirement. They have the open space requirement. They have the uh, groundwater requirement. And then they have um, the setbacks. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, it's in the historical commit district. So there's like the regulations on the type of building, the sidings, the sign, and then obviously the house itself. So um, really that's kind of like where Carlos was just trying to really give us the best picture so we can make this decision. And really we have, we have till tomorrow to, to make this decision. Um, and it's a really big one. As you guys know, interest rates aren't good, but we've secured a loan and um, our practice is growing a lot. So we we believe that this should be okay for us. This is something that's feasible and we are interested in doing it. Um, and, and the feasibility study came back with, a building that we would be really happy with the size it's about 4,000 square feet. So that's kind of where we are with that. So now um, really, yeah, we saw the letter, we saw a letter from the historical commission from many years ago. And then we, you had your email sent to us and really, yeah, it's like um, not really sure how to proceed. I thought maybe we could just like let you guys know our intention. Mm -hmm. And we don't know anything about development. Really, we, we, we did build our dental office it was already in someone else's building. But at least to let you guys know, like where we stand and our philosophy. And, um, you know, I have some ideas that I think would be really cool. I don't know if they're p possible from a um, like engineering standpoint, but I don't know. I don't see why not. You know, I love to think outside the box. Um, so that being said, like we can just quickly talk. We're not against moving the building at all. You know, I didn't even think you could move a building, but I have seen it done three or four times in the last few years here in Amherst. So I'm like, okay, that makes sense. The seller has informally said he could move the building if we gave it to him, which we're not against. Like. Um, okay. you know, at the same time, if we can, you know, if it's something that there's value for us, considering the debt and the interest rates and all this, if it's, if there is, like you said, if we can auction at a nominal value, that would be helpful for us because we don't even know how much this project is going to cost. And 
when we built our office, construction was like 250 a square foot. Now it's like 400 a square foot, 500 a square foot. So really this could be millions of dollars that we're trying to build. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a little bit of a concern that if that could help offset it, because we are paying, we're not paying for land, we're paying for a house that's currently cash flowing, like he's renting it. So we are, that's built into what we're paying today or tomorrow, um, which is, and I don't think it won't, it's not a secret, it's $706,000. So that's not a small amount of money. No. And we have to come up with like a 30% down payment, which is, that's fine. We're lucky we have it. Um, but we're delaying paying off student debt and to to kind of do this, but we feel like we're young. So it, it's something we're interested in doing and we're very close. It's been a long road and yeah, everything has lined up to this point. Um, and basically what we, like if we had something that said that this house can't be touched and it can't be altered, you know, I think that would be a deal breaker for us. Mm -hmm. um because it's just that house is not going to work for us and it's it's not worth 700,000 as a as a rental to college students mm -hmm. um so as i said in the letter that i sent to carlos as of right now there are no laws stopping you from opening yeah. the house or even tearing it down it's just from our perspective we would like it to stay either there yeah. or elsewhere um if you look at the history of the town, 1840 is really when that street started to be developed. Yeah. So it's sort of, it's a good example of like the first houses that you would see on that street. Yeah. And um, as you said, the inside is terrible. <laughs> um, I mean, we're mainly concerned about the outside. Yeah. It does right now looks pretty great. I don't know the history of the outbuildings attached. Like, I don't know if those also due to 1840, if those are at a later date from the house. Um, the L off the back looks original, but I'm not sure about that garage-like building. Yeah. Um, so we, we're willing to work with you. Um, and I mean, if in the end it has to come down, it has to come down, but we would like to make the effort to try to save it if we can. And we would, I think we're really on the same page. Like we love that house. And I'm someone who just really appreciates um, the East Coast and what it is. And I really do like the look of Hadley and what the the way they've kept the develop it's de it's business friendly, and, but the development has been um just in the way they they keep the buildings looking a certain way. I really do like that look. Um I think like I have an idea that I thought would be really interesting. I don't know how to kind of go forward and it was, it would be essentially to use the house as part of the building mm -hmm. and really the 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 l part is where like a lot of the damage is like in there it's it's like um it it's have like the wood is just really compromised mm -hmm. um and then the barn is just like a mess um so the, those two buildings, I would like, my idea would be to incorporate those into a new barn looking building that um, is like kind of the bigger portion of the dental practice. And then I don't know, cause I'm not an architect or designer. So I don't know where would we put the entrance here or there, but essentially have the house as like the entrance, the waiting area, the admin staff, who knows? Um, and I think it would be, it would, it, the only things that are going to hold this up are the bylaws, you know, like there's no reason that this shouldn't happen that way. It could happen very easily, mm -hmm. but um, then there's, it just goes against the laws that exist. Mm -hmm. So it's like one of those situations that, you know, I don't know. I, you know, I'm kind of learning about things. There's variances. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what it entails to come up with a variance or how open they are to variances. And, you know, um, from our end, I guess we're saying we would love to, we would love, love, love to preserve this building 
And truly, I kind of think that if we were, a, we probably present a way to preserve this building for much longer than it could be preserved, especially considering what Hadley and that intersection and that it's little strip becoming. is becoming right there. Mm -hmm. It's really not going to, it's really moving away from residential. And that corner is very, very busy mm -hmm. and loud. So we would be happy to meet with the planning board with you to explain the historical, historical significance of the house and why we think it should be saved. I think we could make a good case. I mean, ultimately it comes down to them approving doing the work or not the way you would like to do it and the way we would like to approve it. Um, I think it is possible that we could make it happen. Um, but I mean, their job, of course, is to work within the bylaws that exist. So we just For have sure. to make sure that we're we're working together and trying to find a common goal. I think the historical angle is probably our best bet. Yeah. I mean, and then option B is something we would love and are super open to, like which would be best for us would be to, as you said, like auction it off at like a nominal price. We don't have to pay for the demolition. Um, and, uh, you know, the house is preserved just maybe down the street. Mm -hmm. Option C of that is you know, maybe if we stay busy the way we are and we can get our student debt paid off, um, we're not in a rush right now. We are, we have six more years, six or seven more years left on our current lease. So this is not like, like a tomorrow. this is not something that we are trying to do right away. We don't even have the financing secured. We don't even know how much it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. So um, time is all of our friends. Like we're not, we're not like, there's, there's no um, timeline right now at the moment. Um, but essentially, yeah, like maybe we can buy some of our own land. Maybe you guys can help us find some land of historical significance and we can move it there would be somewhat interesting. And then it can remain a rental, I guess, or maybe it can be another commercial somewhere else on a smaller lot. Mm -hmm that is, would fit like a 1500 square foot building better. Mm -hmm. um, or like Peter said, he would take the house. That's fine too. <laughs> like we can give the house away and um, I'm sure he can just move it down the road. You know, maybe he would move. Yeah. He owns land in North Hadley. I don't know where else he owns land, but he could just. He owns he, a lot of property. Yeah. He can just put it on one of those properties. No problem. He gets a house. We get the house off the property and that's a win-win. These are all great scenarios that we were not thinking of. So when we were initially saying we plan to demolish it, that's because we didn't even we didn't understand yeah. that mm -hmm. there are other options or it's even worth it. So um, we're okay with all of those. Those are all great. We have a lot of time. You know, I would say maybe three or four years from now, we're going to get down to crunch time okay. where if someone's like really dragging their feet with moving it and we've agreed to it. You know, maybe we could run into some trouble there. Cause like if our, if when our lease, we need, if our lease is up and we run into trouble with our current landlord, you know, it's a dental practice. It's extremely intensive to build a new one. You, you know, it's, it's not something that takes a year, probably, probably two years to build. So, you know, um, from my end, we worked with Carlos and he came up with a plan, which was quite expensive, but that's fine. Like we've done a, a significant amount of due diligence to, to get to where we are. You know, from this meeting, I'm happy to kind of go and see and you know see if he can drop one more plan that includes okay. the building that so that and I would compensate him for that I'm happy to take that cost on our own and say hey Carlos thanks so much for what you've done can you add one more can you and I I did send him that over the weekend <laughs> but um you know yesterday was the holiday mm -hmm. so and I haven't heard back from him um, but, you know, I, th we have, we just saw like a really nice barn the other day and, and we think it essentially it's, it's what is already there, but just 
um, improved a little would be really, really, I think, awesome. But again, I think the, the, the problem is that that house, like you'd never be able to build a house there right now. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like we're on the same page and we want sure. the same goals. So, um, I mean, I'm not going to stop you from buying the property. I have no way to do that. <laughs> um, so I wish you luck with that. And um, let's stay in touch about moving forward and um, see how we can be of a help to you guys. And um, hopefully we can find a great solution that works for everybody. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. I mean, my only question would be like, has this situation ever presented itself in, in the, the past? past? Yeah. Yeah. Um, not within our time on the commission, but that Mm -hmm. doesn't mean it hasn't happened before us. Um, I mean, historically people move buildings all the time. Like we're working on this walking tour right now about West street and where the railroad came through the bike path, all those houses had to be moved like a couple feet away from where the railroad went through. And they just did like that. Like it was no problem. Nowadays we have things like, um, electrical lines and stuff that, um, (laughs) might be a hindrance. But um, like, even if you could pick the house up and move it more into the middle of the property and build out behind it, I mean, I don't know how that would work with parking. That's just an idea. Um, But I don't know, like, I mean, houses have been moved a lot in the past, but in the terms of moving a house to build a business, um, probably, I'm just not intimately familiar with it. Right. And then also, I guess I was asking, like, in terms of variances and things like that with the planning board, like, are they amicable to these kind of ideas or are they, um, you know, kind of like set in stone that, you know, I'm just wondering if you've worked with them on like these kind of this kind of thing in the past, like, um, do they essentially what I'm asking is, do they value the historical significance of that? have you guys run into that? Like what, Um, what, or I guess we would present and see what they say. mm -hmm. (laughs) We haven't worked too closely with them on anything like that. Um, I know people often get variances in terms of sign sizes and stuff along those lines. Um, I mean, I believe there are some members of the planning board who live in very historic houses in Hadley. Right. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't know what their viewpoint is specifically on saving historic buildings. Sure. Um, I'd like to think the best of them. But then again, they have been appointed to the planning board to be able to uphold those bylaws that exist. So mm-hmm. I think it'll just be um, some relationship building and just making a good case about uh, the history of that building, the history of East Street totally, and understanding that when the house was built, Route 9 didn't look like it does now. So Mm -hmm. things have changed, not in your favor, but beyond your control. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, Yeah, okay. Well, then I guess what would be beneficial is maybe we can be in touch. And, you know, I think they meet, you know, like the planning board meets uh, once a month. meeting right now. (laughs) <laughs> um, so typically it's first and third Tuesdays. So obviously they're not going to meet on 4th of July. So we'll just have to see when they might be meeting in July and they might take July off. I'm not sure what their work. Sure. Will be. Yeah. Um, so if I was you, I would reach out to them and ask what their upcoming schedule is and ask to be put on the agenda. If, if you're ready to start asking these questions of them. Yeah, I think what I would probably aim for is like a mid, like one of the August meetings. That would give everyone plenty of time to, mm-hmm. um, maybe like let this deal close. Yeah, maybe we can actually get a a plan that does follow all their other laws, mm-hmm. incorporating the building, incorporating the building, and then and give us time to maybe present a case that is um you know worth them considering like hey yeah this is you know i get it it violates the bylaws but that being said you know maybe this would be beneficial for 
whatever reason that they deem. <laughs> but yeah. like, we can convince them of that. You know, I, I, I can say as someone who, you know, it's it's a massive service for the area to build what we are building. I'm, I currently go to three hospitals. I'm one of the only pediatric dentists in town. Our office is way too full mm. with little, little kids that a lot of them are in really severe need. A lot of the kids are in DCF. Um, you know, it, it, it's a massive benefit for the area. It's just why we kind of came out here. You know, there is the need. So it would be amazing if that house, it really could be a place of like, I mean, it, it, we of healing. And if we could somehow figure that out, that would be great. We would love that. It's okay. a beautiful house. We love it. Great. So when, yeah. when it comes to the planning board, although we don't have any knowledge of any history, most of the members of the planning board have been on the planning board for like a long time. So yeah. they have more knowledge of, for example, when the East Hampton Savings Bank building was built there, yeah. um, what was going on. So and definitely ask them about it because yeah. they would have which I, I have, I actually have. And Bill has been great. I mean, Bill is very straightforward with us. And we we have, they know us because we when, when we opened our initial business, we had to present mm -hmm. the business to them. Yeah. So we've worked with them and we have a really good relationship. And Bill has known for a while I've been looking. I did look at another lot down by Hadley Family Medicine. There's that, there's like a White House. Um, but that whole backyard is like wetlands, wetlands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which we were told wasn't wetlands, but I had someone come and look at it. And he's like, this is absolutely wetlands. And then when you look at it, it's like, yeah, this is, this is wet land <laughs> and there's a stream right there. So, um, you know, we did really didn't want to do that and it just wasn't, yeah, it wasn't feasible, but um, Bill has told me that, it's not an issue at all from the planning board. And what happened with the East Hampton Savings Bank, the comment, he even told me the comment. The comment was that if the current owner had decided to knock down the house, there would have been no objection because it's his house and he can do whatever he wants with it. So therefore, there is if, is if, if East Hampton Savings Bank wanted to knock down that building, they can and I guess that's what they did. So, um, you know, that's, that, that was my understanding. So he said, that's, that's, uh -huh. that's a non-issue. Um, and I guess mainly why we are meeting here is um, number one, because Carlos kind of, Carlos also told us the same thing that this is in this area and at the moment there's there's nothing that could derail this but really from our perspective we would love to I think it makes the most sense with a historical thing to not move it and keep it where it is mm -hmm. I think that's there's something very special about that like this is where this was built and this is where this is going to stay um and then we you know, we can present it for ourselves, but if I meet with, um, I, I feel like if we have more people that believe in this, that this, that could, you know, help us um, make that case mm -hmm. is how we might would, how we could have the num the best shot of keeping the building where it is. Now, I don't know if the historical commission, if you guys would prefer the building not touched at all and just moved. Um, you know, if that's what you guys prefer, that's fine as well. I mean, our preference is that it doesn't come down. Right. Um, if it's incorporated into a new building, great. If it's moved, great. Um, I mean, we want to work with you to make yeah. sense to find the best solution. Yeah. We don't want to be difficult and we don't want to stop you from doing your project, but we do appreciate that you guys reached out to us that For sure. we are in work together moving forward. Um, that just is a really good, great faith um, relationship right off the bat. So uh, I 
I think we have a pretty good plan. I mean, you're going to buy the property. You're going to come up with a um, new plan for the property that includes the historic house. And then we will reach, you'll reach out to the planning board and let us know when you're on their agenda so we can come and support you mm -hmm. and um, help with your defense, if you will, of the yeah. historic structure. Yeah, that would be nice. I think what we'll do too is, yeah, I, I will have to, I will kind of take this conversation to Carlos because he's the civil engineer. Something up. So there he will be, I want to at least talk to him and be like, hey, this is something we really want to do. Is this feasible? So that, mm -hmm. and then maybe we, I can even, both, if, you know, depending on that, I can at least do an email, let you know that engineers believe this is feasible or engineers mm -hmm. don't believe this feasible. If the engineers don't believe it's feasible, then it sh we should look into moving it. Right. Um, if they believe it's feasible, then, it then, would be nice to do. then we know it's mm -hmm. worth our time to, to make that case. Wonderful. Great. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. And yes, telling thanks for having about me. Yourselves. Thank um, you for what you do. Yeah. Oh yeah, thank you. We, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. We love our job, though. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. The kids are cute. His is especially hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's not as hard. Yeah. But thank you all for taking the time to meet with us. You're very welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much and for we, coming. we also we really appreciate what you do. We love where we are, and 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 I I think, yeah, my name is very historical you know um it's very important to try and preserve mm -hmm. the past and so i think what you guys do is very important it was a privilege to talk to you guys and yeah it's exciting to think of what might be possible and 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 at the very least we gained a lot from understanding that this doesn't need to be demolished and um, i'm all about trying to use as little as possible so if we don't need to knock it down that's ideal Great. Yeah, nice to nice to talk to you guys. Meet you. Me too. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. Yeah, Thank have you. a good night. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, I'm gonna go bathe her. You need a bath. Okay. Um, I will just share that I did research on the Haywards, Elijah Hayward, who built the house today, and his daughter Sophia. She had a second marriage to my great great grandfather. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Small town. Yeah. So I'm not descended from her. Um, no. but she married Lewis West yes. in 1913. Huh. When they were both in their 70s. Huh. Cool. Okay. Um, does anybody have any comments they want to make about the 101 East Street project before we moved on in the agenda? Just said he's that's the best place for him to be with a street light there going down by Hadley family practice, making turning out of that practice is a pain in the neck, yep. depending upon which you're turning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it sounds like he wants to preserve that. They want to preserve the house. Um, sounds like they want to work with us. So I think this is a best case scenario and hopefully um, it will be positive moving forward. All right, CPA application projects, next step, the sign. So I did get on the phone with Adriana and I asked her about translating the signs, which she said she would do. And I gave her the deadline of July 1st. Um, she did not reply to the email I sent her with the signs. So um, we'll see if that comes to fruition. Uh, she also told me she's going to resign from the commission. I have not received an official communication from her about that. But I did inform Jennifer that um, both she and Stacy have resigned and that it was just down to us five. Um, when we do get the Spanish translations, our original designer fee did not include designing the Spanish language side. So I believe we will need to use our budget to move forward with that design. Um, do we want to take an official motion about that? Or do we have any discussion about using that funding for that purpose? I can make a motion so we can discuss it. That's easy okay. enough. I, I move that we use our budget to 
fund tra the translation of the signs into Spanish? Um, actually, what we would be using the budget for would be designing the Spanish okay. language side. Okay, designing the Spanish language side. Uh, do I have a second? Second. second. All right, open for discussion. Um, I proposed using our budget because we didn't specifically ask for that in our CPA application. And the most recent quote I got from Fossil Graphics was at the upper end of the $10,000 we asked for. So I'm just hesitant to use our CPA money um, if we need to be saving all of it for the actual fabrication and delivery of the sign. It makes sense. I mean, and money is there. Sorry, I just need to turn my light on. Um, and our budget did increase to six hundred dollars this fiscal year, so we have a little bit more than we did in the past. <laughs> um, well, I'm not hearing any further discussion. Should we take our vote? Okay, Denise. Yes. Courtney. Yes. Terry. Yes. Judy. Yes. Diana. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, Denise, I have a question for you. Does the farm own a forklift? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can send it to us. Okay, great. Because that's an extra fee if we have to have them bring a forklift. Yep. Okay, cool. Thank I'll you. text you the address to use right now. We're not there yet, but we will be. <laughs> we will be. Um, okay, so once we have um, the Spanish side designed, then I think we are ready to roll and send it to fabrication and we can get going with these things. So let's hope that can happen over the next month or so. All right, any questions about the sign? All right, West Street walking tour. So we sent it around for final edits. Uh, I've been working on it and Courtney has been as well. Um, the deadline was last Friday. So if no one has any objections, I think Courtney and I will just finish up on that work and then um, we can be ready to print it. I'm sorry that I was not, av not available. I couldn't work on it. That's I was okay. away. I reached out to Mary Thayer and she said she's happy to look at it as well. Um, so I'll, I'll plan on sending that to her later this week and give her maybe a two week deadline um, if that works for her. Okay. I think there was like yeah, two doing that. things I was still trying to follow up on myself. So I'll get that done this week. Great. Denise, did you say something? I was just thanking you both for doing all that work. Oh, all sure. Yeah. Yeah. It was mainly Courtney. <laughs> Amazing. I should be editor. Okay. Um, the driving tour. So Stacy is not available to do the recording. So I reached out to Alex about doing that. And um, so he said that his intern can help doing some of the narration. Um, so she could lend herself with a female voice. Um, so we need to find somebody who could do the male presenting voice um, and that he would loan us equipment to do that with. Um, I started researching if we would host it on SoundCloud. Um, they have decreased the free amount of time to only three hours. So I'm not sure what we do come in at for our total time. Um, other than that, like the next plan up costs $8 and 25 cents a month, um, which our budget could handle, but I think we would ultimately like to do this at no cost. Um, I reached out to them to just like ask more if like they thought our project made sense to be hosted on SoundCloud. Um, I haven't heard back because I did that this afternoon, but I'll let you guys know if I learn more about that. I don't think it's going to be any more than two hours. Oh, great. It took an hour like, just to like read it in the car. Good to know. Um, I want people to be able to download it, which I did see some SoundClouds have that option. Um, I also want to make sure that when it's on SoundCloud, 
the people who are listening to it don't get any ads like in the middle of it. And at first I understood that that had to do with what type of subscription you had, but I want to make sure people can just find this and not even have to have a subscription. They can just hit play um, or even an account or anything like that. So um, good to know about how long we think it is. And hopefully they can, in the email I sent, they'll answer those kind of questions. Alex. Yeah, um, you. It sounds like you could also try to look into something like WordPress. It might be a semi-cheaper option. I don't know much about SoundCloud, but I'm just throwing out the idea that WordPress is out there and it's pretty user friendly. So, like you mean, we would create our own website and just have it hosted on the WordPress site? Yeah, and you can you can get a free account, but I'm not 100 percent on whether I can host sound stuff on it, but um, I'm pretty sure if the next level up is like seven dollars a month or something. But something for you to look into if you, if you need to. Okay. I also don't know like if it's feasible if we could just have a a downloadable file on the town website, but it might be too big. I don't know. Audio files are not that big, so um, you you could happen. It depends on what the town site has to offer. <laughs> well, which I don't know much about. It's so like every city and town in Massachusetts has to have the same format. I think like it's organized by some state government office. Like if you look at everybody's website, they're like the same and they're not super duper user friendly. No, they're not. <laughs> no. No, they're not. Absolutely not. <laughs> Um, but, uh, that's one option that you could look into, like mm -hmm. I said. Thank you. All right. Any more comments, questions about the driving tour? I was at the Porter Phelps Huntington Museum today and chatted with Brian Whetstone, who was there. Um, Brian was, uh, he joined our meeting. A few months ago, he was doing the, um, he was a professor for the Macris uh, historical class, which ha did happen. Um, <clears throat> he said that <clears throat> one of his students found out a lot of information about the Ezra Clark Inn, which is part of the driving tour. Um, it's not up on Macris yet, um, but we exchanged info and he's gonna send to me at least the draft. So hopefully I can add a sentence or two in there before it's recorded. Right. Do we think Brian knows of a man who might want to lend their voice to our audio tour? I can ask. That's like something one of his students would be interested in. Yeah, too, true. Some of them public history or something along those lines. All right, any more comments about the driving tour? Okay. Russell School, what's going on? Anything? <laughs> um, no, not really. Um, it's just, I feel like it's an ongoing battle. Um, we, I think I mentioned at the last meeting that uh, the committee expressed interest in participating in the RFP process, which was shut down. Um, and we have since asked a couple of questions clarifying the scope of work um, because the scope of work that was approved at town meeting did not include stabilization. Um, and apparently Jake from the Architectural Heritage Foundation, who's the one who put together the scope of work is participating in creating the RFP, but we are not. And uh, the Architectural Heritage Foundation has not been hired to our knowledge. Um, so I asked those questions and um, they did not, they deliberately did not answer the questions. So um, we're getting a lot of pushback. Um, there's also a rumor that the Russell School Committee is going to be dissolved per the select board's recommendation. So we're just, we're continuing to lose um, power and control over 
um, what's going to happen with the building. Okay. Um, we did discuss uh, helping create a survey after the feasibility study is complete um, to help narrow down. Um, to help narrow down um, some of the options again. Um, there were, I think we had five options in the original feasibility study and if they could be narrowed down to two or three that we can get a better sense of what people are interested in uh, moving forward with the building. Right. Okay, is there any progress on the um, video Alex was working on? So if you pay attention to what we've been doing the past month or two, um, we could easily say we have not gotten there. Things, <laughs> have, slowed. <laughs> Things have slowed down a, 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 a ton for us. So um, I'm hoping um, soon we're, gonna, we're going to um, get on it. Um, literally last week, sports ended for us for the year for the school year. Um, so, um, and uh, once my intern's out of school completely, which I believe tomorrow is the last day, she's gonna go get into that um, voiceover stuff for us. So, once I get that, um, then I'm gonna start on the edit. Great, great, thank you. And I just looked at the town site. Uh, my end of the town site, and there's no way to upload an audio file, so the town site's out. <laughs> of course. All right, thank you for looking into that. Yep, you got it. All right, any more comments about Russell School? Okay, so um, any other new business? I forgot to put this on here. The Google Drive, I have started to move documents over from my personal Google Drive into the Hadley Historical Comms Google Drive. Um, this is not just a straightforward process. You have to copy everything and then move the copies. So that's what I've started to do. Um, I've tried to avoid doing any of the ones we are actively working on. Um, so mainly just old stuff has moved so far and nothing has been deleted out of the original files. Um, so I'll let you guys know when that does actually happen and everything is officially moved over and I'll make sure you guys all have access to that. Uh, any questions about the Google Drive? Okay. My one other thing, I mentioned it before, we do now have two open spots on the commission. Um, I learned at the open meeting law webinar I went to that our quorum still remains for people because it's based on the total amount of people you are supposed to have, not actually the amount of people you do have. Luckily, you all typically come to meetings. So we have been making our quorum regularly so we're able to get things done. Do we want to start trying to actively recruit to fill those two spots? Um, I mean, in the past, we personally reached out to some people we thought might be interested, but would it be worthwhile to um, post in like the, um, Facebook groups, or is that perhaps opening a can of worms? I don't think it would hurt to put something out there. Okay. It's being very diplomatic. <laughs> How it should be. I'm, I'm not sure it would hurt. I'm not sure what it would, would gain either, but yeah. Um, I, I often wonder if people don't even realize this is a volunteer opportunity for them. Mm -hmm. I also think people get scared away by the amount of work they think is involved. Um, I mean, I don't want somebody to join just to throw it on a resume and then not do anything. But also, if we do have seven people, then the opportunity is there to do more than what we have been doing if we do get people who are active and interested. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm of the opinion that, yeah, we can throw the idea out there and, and we might not get any takers, which is fine, or we might get some takers who are potentially really great members. But 
that's, I mean, that's possible. It would be nice to get someone with, with a long history of knowledge of Hadley too, for that mm -hmm. matter. But because mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've only been here for 35 years, so. <laughs> only. <laughs> that's a newie. Yes, I'm a newbie. I know it's so. I have funny. a good history background though. <laughs> I know we but, we do want somebody with a lot of just general knowledge about history and about how excuse me history of Hadley specifically, um, and like I know we've approached people in the past like Alan Weinberg, but he's just involved with so many other things he can't. He's got his foot in a lot to of us, <laughs> um, which is totally understandable. Um, and then. Some previous members have either moved away or they feel like they are um, past the time that they can give their energy to the commission. Um, so I guess at this point, should I throw it up on Facebook or do we want to take the time to think about it until our next meeting, perhaps propose some people we could personally reach out to um, I mean, I don't want it to make it seem like we're some kind of click exclusive club, like anybody is welcome. <laughs> um, Heavens no. But sometimes a personal invitation can go a long way in getting somebody mm -hmm. involved. Maybe it would be good, a good idea to wait a month and see if, and, and just rack our brains because, I mean, people reached out to me, which Initially, when I was still working, I said I couldn't do it. Plus, it always met on the same night at Deacon's Met, took the church Deacon's Met. So that was another mm. problem. But um, yeah, give us a month to think about the possibility of other people, particularly me and Judy, who might know someone. Okay, great. Um, so I think at the last meeting, we had said we would skip July and then meet in August. Are we still down with that plan? Um, the third Oops. Tuesday in August is the 15th, or we could push it out to the 22nd. If potentially the planning board is meeting on the 15th and we need to attend that meeting, then we should not coincide with them. I'm here. Both days work for me. Okay. Yeah. You're talking the 22nd of August. Yeah. That works for me. I'll be in Maine the week before. Okay. okay. All right. Then let's do the 22nd. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else we need to talk about that we just found out about? before we, after we post the agenda. Well, hearing nothing, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So move. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Welcome. Have a great summer. <laughs>